Thank you, Wendy, and thank you to all of you for being here. Uh, forgive the informality. I'm uh, 30 plus days away from home, and I'm a little punchy on my feet from jet lag. I just came from Greenland and Iceland. Uh, haven't been home in, in, in a long time, and uh, this is my last clean shirt, so <laughs> take what we get. Um, yeah, this is a complex story, and in a way it grew out of a book that I started to write 10 years ago, and that thing it isn't, isn't quite finished yet, but I was, I was looking at the changing natural system in terms of these different essential elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and that eventually got harvested as the framing structure for this, um, for this film. The, the core of the film is human interest stories. Certainly, uh, we talk about physical science, biological science. That's the foundation on which these stories float. But it's fundamentally a story about people and about our interconnection with nature. We're not apart from nature. Um, there is, as you'll see, sort of a, I suppose, a bit of a secret sauce in how the film works. Uh, that's different than most environmental films. Most environmental films tend to be somewhat accusatory and pejorative. They take the stance of saying, you other people out there, you're wrong and you're bad, and we the filmmakers have all the answers and the right ideas. And in this, we wanted to acknowledge that we the filmmakers are part of the same system that we're all part of and to have empathy for our fellow human beings and to you know, reach across the aisle from our left-wing, greeny environmentalism to more conservative sensibilities and acknowledge that we're all in the same boat together. Um, I'd like to share two uh, verbal concepts with you before we get going. Um, Verna, help me out here. Uh, can we bring up that first slide? Uh, yeah, you'll hear this term mentioned late in the film, and we don't put it up on the screen as letters, but this is a, this is a key idea. Um, many of us have heard of the notion of plate tectonics, that the great forces of the earth that are churning the crust of the earth in, around into different pieces and parts and creating earthquakes and volcanoes, those are called plate tectonics. And I came up with this term human tectonics to acknowledge the great force and power of humanity changing the world all around it. So human tectonics are embedded in this film. And human tectonics are the forces that lead to the next big word. Virna. Hello. Um, the Anthropocene. I can barely see you guys out there, but give me a show of hands of how many people have heard this word before. Good, okay, it's getting around, it's nice. Um, the Anthropocene is the new, as of 20 years ago, the new science word for our uh, epoch of geologic time. And it acknowledges that we the people are a force on planet Earth that's leaving a permanent imprint in the fossil record of our time. And if a, an interplanetary geologist passes by 5 million or 50 million years from now, they will see the actual handprint of humanity changing the world as we've previously known it. So this is the name for our new uh, epoch of geologic time. This is an incredibly important uh, notion in science. All of you should get it embedded in your, in your heads. You'll keep seeing it over the years. National Geographic has done a lot of stories that are connected with this idea, and many, many, many other publications have as well. So we don't live in the Holocene. We don't live <clears throat> in the old ice ages, which were known as the Pleistocene. We live in the Anthropocene, where humanity is, is putting its imprint on the basic character of geologic time today. So I'll just let those ideas uh, sit there. And I believe that we have a short film about Remain uh, Nantucket to play before the film actually begins, if I, if I have this uh, run of show correct. So let's roll the Remain uh, trailer, and then we'll go straight into uh, the human element. <laughs> 